As the song goes, hey, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Coming up next. Hi, I'm Alan Smith. Welcome to The Garden Home, a show about design and blurring the lines between inside and out. Well, I've just been up in the attic pulling out all those Christmas decorations. Didn't realize I had so many. It's that time of year again to get ready for the festive holidays. As you can see, I'm getting ready to decorate. In today's show, I'll share tips with you on how to trim the trunk of your tree before bringing it into the house and how to utilize pine cones indoors. I'll also show you a fun way to create holiday luminaries and how to decorate a child's room with fresh greenery. Plus, I can't wait to show you how I decorate my entryway and the fireplace mantle. As you can see, we have a lot to get to today. So why don't we get started by me showing you how I prepared the Christmas tree before bringing it into the house. Look at all these great limbs that I'm saving that I cut off the bottom of the tree. Nothing goes to waste around here. If you have a fresh tree like this, you really want it to last as long as it can inside. So when you select the tree at the local nursery or wherever you get your Christmas tree, you want to make sure that it's, it's really as fresh as it possibly can be. I know where this one came from. I buy from the same garden center every year. They always get really fresh ones and I try to get there as soon as they arrive because what I want to do is get it here, get home and get the bottom of it cut off uh, as quickly as possible and get it into some fresh water. You can see I've cut off about half an inch of the trunk because I'm not sure exactly how much I'm going to need to take off to put it in its stand, but I've also taken off a few of these limbs and these are the ones that I'm going to save over here. When I picked out this tree, I ran my hands along the limbs like this to make sure there were no uh, loose needles. And this, this tree is really heavy. It's full of water. So you want a tree that really feels heavy, not too light. That means there's plenty of moisture still in it. So from here on, what I need to do is try to make sure that I conserve the moisture and keep as much of it in the tree as possible. Now you can spray it with an anti-transpirant, which will keep the tree from transpiring or losing water through its needles. Now, of course, you wanna make sure the, the tree stays watered and fully hydrated once it's inside the house. And so you can use a floral solution for, for cut flowers, which will actually help the tree last longer. And one of the other ways to keep moisture in there is to use ice cubes. Once you get the tree decorated, you've got presents all under it, you don't want to spill anything on your presents, you can place ice cubes just by reaching up near the trunk and dropping them into your stand. It's a nice little tip. And the other thing you want to do is when you take this tree into the house, you want to keep it away from any vents. So if you could cover over any vents that might be near it and you want to keep it away from any source of heat, like a fireplace, uh, because that will just cause it to dry out that much faster. Of course, I know all this is a little more trouble than having an artificial tree, but the aroma of this tree in the house, it really makes it smell like the holiday. A fun way to light a path during the holidays is to make these easy holiday luminaries. You see, all you need are mason jars, fresh greenery, Epsom salt, floral wire, and some tea lights. Start by taking a long piece of greenery and wrapping one end with a piece of floral wire. Then fold the greenery into a small wreath form and wrap the other end with the wire. You may want to use additional wire to wrap around the wreath just to keep any loose greenery from sticking out too much. Next, simply fill your mason jars about half full with the Epsom salts and place the tea light on top of the salts. When your jars are assembled, place the wreath forms where you want illumination and then place the jar inside the wreath. Now I like to take a few extra pieces of greenery and tuck them into areas where it needs to be plumped up a little. Then when it's time, just light the tea lights and enjoy your beautiful holiday luminaries.
I wish you could smell these pine cones. The aroma, well, it's marvelous. They really smell like the holidays. You know, when you walk through a store where they're selling scented pine cones, they really get your attention. And so do the prices. This is a simple way to create, well, these aromatic pine cones that'll fill your home with that scent of the holidays. Just locate a conifer tree that produces really big, beautiful cones, like a spruce or a pine tree, and gather as many as you think you'll need. This time of year, you can find them lying on the ground beneath the trees. Now, to give them that special scent, you'll need a small bottle of cinnamon oil, a few Q-tips, and a large plastic bag. Just dip the Q-tip into the bottle of oil and dot the oil around the inside of the pine cone. Now you don't need to use too much because this scent is very strong. Then place the cones in a plastic bag and set them aside for a few days for the oil to really set in. You see, it's just that easy. You can use these pine cones in your decor or you can just set them in a bowl somewhere around the house and you'll have this marvelous aroma filling your home throughout the holidays. Anytime there's a holiday, I always like to go all out with some sort of wacky decorating. And the Christmas season, well, why not? So here in the entry hall, I decided to do something very earthy and natural and use things off the landscape here at the farm, as well as lots of greenery and some of these stuffed pheasants. These are antique vintage ringneck pheasants that I borrowed from a friend. So it looks like a whole flock of pheasants have gotten loose in the entry hall. It's kind of fun. I've got them all over the place. On this sideboard, which is sort of a central hall centerpiece or display I'm creating, I've got about six of them here, but there's also one just above me in the lantern, and then they're also on the garland going up the staircase. What I'm doing now is I'm just freshening up the greenery. I'm sticking some of this fresh cedar inside these containers. What I did is anchored this sideboard with two large ceramic containers, and I put some floral foam in there and went out and cut some large limbs of hickory. No leaves on them, but I like the way the stems and branches are very architectural, very strong, and they're spaced evenly, so it's not real brushy looking. And then I took and decorated this with some Spanish moss and even found an old bird nest and tucked into this one to give a little atmosphere. So you see, these two create a lot of height and they go way up, almost eight feet in the air, and they sort of frame this one center lantern in the hall with the bird looking down on us. And then what I did is just took these vintage pheasants and tucked these old boys all around and then covered the bases with just a little bit of Spanish moss, as you can see here, and just layered greenery around just to give it that holiday touch. And if you look behind, there's a pair of hurricane shades with an amber-colored candle in it. So at night, I can light those and it illuminates this in such a beautiful way. If you look at these pheasants closely, you'll see that these old boys have virtually every color in the rainbow in them. And that's why I chose this plaid ribbon because it reflects many of the colors that you find in the bird. So what I did here with the garland is I draped a mixed green garland all the way down the staircase. And also these metal objects are kind of oversized Christmas decorations. And then these stockings made out of burlap with little jingle bells on them. So it all comes together in a whimsical way. And like I said, it looks like these birds have taken over the hallway. You know, it can really be a lot of fun to decorate a house for Christmas. I enjoy coming up with themes year in and year out. This year, on the mantles, I carried out a garland theme. And this one here in the front parlor is made of a really thick garland, where I took three different strands of garland that I bought and weaved it together to, to create this really abundant feeling coming up one side, across the top of the mantle, and down. And then once I got all the greenery in place, using cedar and pine from off the farm here and integrated some spruce and other pieces that I bought, what I did is I began to decorate it with brown things first. You can see these giant pine cones. 
as well as these cinnamon sticks that are bundled together. I love reflecting the color of the room back into some of the decorations that I have. And there's plenty of brown in this room and it's winter dress. The sofas are brown and there's a lot of brown in the rug. The other thing that I've added here is silver. I've taken some silver decorations in the way of these whimsical snowflakes and just and basic clusters of silver balls just tucked in like this. And to finish it off, I used some fresh apples, these little crab apples, and then I've used bundles of lavender, which add a beautiful aroma to the Christmas greens, and also the color is perfect in this room. In the back parlor, I started with a similar base, a heavy garland, but I adorned it with punctuations of red, red dandina berries, as well as vintage pictures, and a plaid ribbon that ran all the way through it that's reflected in the Christmas tree. You know, it's interesting how mantles or fireplaces are often the focal point or the center of a room. And during the holidays, why not just amplify it and really dress them out? You know, the holidays is such a magical time for children, and what a fun way to decorate their room with fresh greenery. You know, take a look at this. If you can add a touch of whimsy in the way of a candy cane form or even a snowflake, and then decorate it with some fun, rustic, and casual pieces like some of these wood ornaments. You see, you can just work them into the greenery and the other natural elements that you already see here. You can pick them up at a craft store and just tuck them into the greenery like this. The great thing about going with a neutral theme like this is it'll work within any color scheme or decor in your home. Hey, the thing to keep in mind during the holidays is just to have some fun with this. Use your own imagination. Come up with your own design. Paige is going to come by in just a little while to give me the lowdown of where we are with the budget. So I thought it would be smart to come through the house and try to see what isn't finished. Even though he feels like we're really close to finishing, there's still a lot of um, details here that need to be looked at, mainly paint, some light fixtures. It's all sort of uh, the final details, but they all need to be taken care of before we can call this job finished and complete. You know, I think the ceiling looks really good in here. There's just a little paint touch up that needs to be taken care of, like here, and some work on the baseboards. Overall, I think the floors look really good. Aha, finally, finally. Got the countertop in, that looks good. It's supposed to be two lights above here. But um, these sinks look really good. I was really grouping the closet designs with the interior design of the house. So the idea here is that we can get all the workmen out of the house, we can begin the interior design aspect of it. While that's going on, I can get with Tony about uh, outfitting these closets. So this is a really generous space. I think it's gonna serve them well. kitchen is really coming along. There, there are a few details here that need to be worked out. One thing we, we figured out is that the refrigerator fits in this place okay, but the door sort of hangs up over here on this wall. So what Tony's gonna do is he's gonna take off about an inch of the counter here 
just along here, and that'll take it right back to this edge of the tile. That'll give us just enough room where this door won't really hit this, which I think will help a lot. So that's a detail that needs to be worked out. We've got these pulls here that need to be uh, replaced. We ordered them, they came in, they were too large, so one of the smaller size, I think it'll look a lot better. So we've got the washer and dryer, they're gonna get stacked here, but then along these walls, I've gotta figure out the shelving. It will be worked out a little later once we get started with the interior design, so I'm not worried about these utility spaces. Looks like all we need here is the hardware. Plumbers were here and they had to take the door off the cabinet. You can see there, so that has to be repaired. And not any one thing is a big deal, but there are lots of little tiny details that need to be attended to. Okay, Paige, so um, I know you wanted to meet, and uh, I have a feeling I know what it's all about. Since we're close to the end of the project, I just need to kind of get an idea where we are with things. Yeah, well, there's, there's, there's the good news and the bad news. Always is, isn't there? Right, and, <laughs> but the good, and the good news is, you got a nice big rain out here at the farm. You know, this is a custom house, mm -hmm. and this is your creative juices here on the house. Mm -hmm. And we started off, like most people, with a plan. Yeah. And then sometimes the plan changes and people adjust to the plan. A little here, a little there. A little here and a little there and a little bit more here and a little bit more there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that will affect the budget. But we. But I know you've been keeping me on track and telling me where we're going off and where we're adding. And so, how, yeah. how do we do? Yeah. We're right on the money? Well... You know, there were a couple things through the project that we talked about heavily, we went back and forth about, and, mm. and there were things that you just really wanted mm -hmm. to keep. The fireplace. You, you, so and, what's the bottom line, bud? No, and then, you know, the, the other thing we talked about were, we well, had to figure out Tony's labor, and Tony and Tony Jr.'s labor, and then you had to figure out your time, your time in this project, and then how we finished out, you know, how we'd have to keep taking boards off and moving stuff and repainting and stuff like that. Uh, so you probably spent a little extra to have that look, but it's a really nice look. Mm -hmm. your, um, your final number as, as of today, mm -hmm. and we're, we're so close to the end this this is a good number this could be the last this, day this could this could be the last <laughs> day <laughs> you're fourteen thousand seven hundred ninety dollars over fourteen yeah so that's one hundred sixty four thousand seven hundred ninety dollars so what's but what percentage is that over it's it's about it's a little less than ten percent a little less than ten and i think nine and a half percent mm. Mm. so so if we you have fourteen thousand dollars i can borrow uh, <laughs> Who doesn't love a charming cottage? And that's exactly what we have here in Ohio. It's owned by Ashley. And what she loves is a sort of cool season, uh, shady garden, one that has a cottage sort of feel to it. And that's good because this house faces the north, so it's the cool side of the house. Um, I think that one of the things that would really help here is to create some sort of a walk that would come across uh, the front with a soft curving line like this. Coming back on the other side of this large U, using it as an anchor. Now, another thing you could think about here, Ashley, would be to take it this direction. You could come in, we'll use a different color here, make a pad here, and then bring that path along and let it come out 
here, like this, coming in the front of this U, which I kind of like because you could actually see the path from the street. Then from here, you could actually put a fence post here and a fence post here with a charming gate, and then maybe another U there, and you create a really strong sense of entry here then that gives you license to do all kinds of planting in here, but we need to anchor it, I think, with a tree or two. For instance, down here on this side, maybe a flowering cherry tree or dogwood here would be really nice. I think you need some evergreens, and so what if you came in behind here and added some yews, just some dark green, dark green here, and then filled in with some rhododendron. Rhododendron does so well for you just filling in this entire garden with some of these big shrubs that will take shady conditions. You might even add another rhododendron here and then fill in this garden with hosta and fern, all these things that really love the shade. Now, one thing that you could do to help define this path, which I think would be really beautiful, would be to line this path with a little row of English boxwood which would give it that real cottage look. So imagine walking along this uh, cut stone path, nice gray flat flagstones up to this pad here at the front, being able to step up onto your porch, and then maybe up here on the porch, have a really large container with some big hostas in it. That creates a focal point up here. Now from this edge line all the way around, your edge line would come on around here, boxwood might come on all the way up to the corner up to where this U is and then this edge of the bed could sweep around and you'd have lawn from here to the street. Ashley, I hope these are helpful tips. Good luck with your project. Well, that's all the time we have for today's show. I hope you were able to pick up some tips that will help make your holiday season more enjoyable and more beautiful. You know, this time of year, there's so much to do and so little time. Until next time, for The Garden Home, I'm Alan Smith. More information about today's topic and other topics covered in this series can be found at pallensmith.com.